My name is Dr. Rizwan Ahmed, or Dr. Rudwan Ahmed, and I'm an associate professor of sociolinguistics in the Department of English Literature and Linguistics at Qatar University. I have always been interested in language, so I find it fascinating how Arabs in different countries speak Arabic differently. Soon after joining Qatar University, I began to hear differences between Qatari dialects. The Arabic word for men was pronounced as Rajjal by some and Rayal by others. I also began to notice words on street signs that I couldn't understand immediately. They were written using spellings that were different from a standard Arabic spelling. In 2015, Katara, the cultural village, held a winter festival for children. It was called in Arabic, Mahrajan Lishta. The written signs for the festival were all around the city. I knew that the word Mahrajan meant festival, but I was intrigued by the spelling and the pronunciation of the word Lishta. I figured out from the translation that it was a Qatari pronunciation of the Arabic word for winter, Al Shita or Ashita. As a sociolinguist, I knew that it couldn't have been a spelling mistake. I began to see many more words in and around Doha and began to wonder about them. Words such as fridge, lucelle, lakhreb, lakhwia on a street signs were like puzzles I wanted to solve. We are the only country in the world that actually write this one, the yeah. way we write them. Yeah. And, and most, and at least the countries that I've been to, like UAE, Kuwait, Saudi Arabia, Egypt, yes, some of them use local words. Yeah. But even then, they, they, they retain Alif Lam, it's Alif Lam all the time. Right. Regardless of how you pronounce it. But I think it was part of the uh, emphasizing the local identity. As we all know, the identity have different layers. One of them is language. Language is not just a tool to express an existing reality. It also helps in creating those realities. Language plays an important role in giving a space a specific identity. A great example of this is the pearl. The pearl in Doha is one of the most luxurious neighborhoods built on a former pearl diving site. It's designed as a multicultural and multilingual neighborhood to attract international residents. This is reflected in its architecture and more importantly, in languages and names. Some of the districts within Pearl have names that are borrowed from European languages. Porto Arabia, Viva Bahria, Medina Central, Floresta Garden, and Costa Malaz. These names are either of non-Arabic origin or they have been created by combining Arabic and languages like French, Italian, Greek, and Spanish. So the Pearl, I think, is very interesting, exactly because it's a very cosmopolitan place. And this is also indicated through its linguistic landscape. So apart from Arabic and English, you also have French, mm -hmm. right? you have uh, shop uh, names, for example, which are in French. Mm -hmm. Uh, you also have Italian, you have Chinese, because there are a number of restaurants ah, from see. these countries. Interesting. You also have Farsi. Very I mean, I, I don't speak Farsi, but I can, whenever I read the word in Farsi, yeah. there are some markers, actually, yeah. that I can identify. So I understand that this is... Uh... Because of how language and names define a place, whether it's a street, a neighborhood, a city, or a country, People in multilingual countries want their language reflected in street signs. In New Delhi, street signs are written in four languages. In some countries, people have to demand recognition and inclusion of their languages. In 2011, Morocco finally recognized Amazigh, also known as Berber, as an official language. The street signs in Casablanca and Rabat now include the Berber language. This is why linguists study the languages of public science. Uh, by linguistic landscape, to put it very simply, I would say that we mean any public use of language. 
and this basically means that we're talking about billboards that have slogans for instance um, part of the linguistic landscape of an area can also be uh, signs like for example you know, public signs street signs building signs uh, traffic signs as well uh, and of course apart from these more formal more official signs we also have a category which is called unofficial mm. signs and these are, are primarily uh, handwritten signs so mm. for example if you go to a shop and then you find a piece of paper saying i'll be back in 10 minutes mm. this is also considered to be part of say linguistic landscape of a neighborhood or even a street mm -hmm. uh, qatari nationals make only about 10 to 11 percent of the total population of 2.9 million about two-thirds of the people living in Qatar do not speak the official language Arabic. While this makes it a multilingual place, it also creates challenges of communication and concerns among the local population about the preservation of their identity and culture. Qatar National Vision 2030 mentions the preservation of Qatari culture as one of the five challenges for the nation. Language is a powerful symbol of identity. Written languages on public signs are even more powerful because they are visible and more permanent than a spoken language. Languages on signs are important for accessibility and making the content of the sign accessible to a broad population, but they also do a lot of identity work. They can be um, a recognition of a diverse space, but they can also be exclusive and limit the um, recognition of the people in a particular space who see a particular sign to a very small group. According to linguists, Qatari Arabic falls within the Eastern group of Arabic dialects, which also includes dialects spoken in Kuwait, Bahrain, UAE, and Saudi Arabia. The uniqueness of Qatari dialect lies in its words, pronunciation, and some grammatical features, which sets it apart from other Arabic dialects spoken by expatriate Arabs living in Qatar. Words such as drisha for window, sida for straight, and drevel for driver are some of them. But that's not all. Many common Arabic words are also pronounced differently in Qatari Arabic. Words containing the sound k is pronounced in two ways, as k or ch, depending on the social and tribal identity of the speaker. For example, this famous dish is pronounced as machboos with a ch by the hadar or settler people and makboos with a k by the Bedouins, which is closer to the standard Arabic pronunciation. A second mark of distinction is the pronunciation of the definite article al. Nouns with the article al, as in al wusail, al uturiya, and al khreb, are pronounced almost like standard Arabic by the Bedouins. But the Hadar pronounced them by dropping the a uh sound in al. So al wusail is pronounced as lusail, and al khreb as la khreb. It is clear that the Bedouin pronunciation is similar to standard Arabic, and for this reason, it is not a good candidate for the representation of local Qatari identity, because identity depends on distinctions. The Hadar pronunciation, by contrast, is different from standard Arabic and other varieties, and therefore it is very useful for the representation of the local Qatari identity. When Hadar pronunciations are written, using non-standard spellings, they become even more distinct visually. The differences in the pronunciation are related to historical factors. There are two major social groups, Bedouins, known in Arabic as Badu, and Hadar, the settled people. Both Bedouins and Hadar migrated to Qatar from Saudi Arabia in the early 18th century. Bedouins lived in the interior part and their livelihood was mainly breeding camel and sheep. The Hadar, by contrast, settled in the coastal areas and gave up their Bedouin style of life and became fishermen, pearl divers, and traders. 
المسميات ما هي الا رموز والرموز نحن من يضفي عليها المعاني صحيح قطر لجأت في السنوات الأخيرة إلى تسمية بعض الشوارع أو بعض المناطق إلى أسماء قديمة غير معروفة أصلا حتى الأسماء القديمة هذه مختلف عليها بين العوائل أو العشائر أو القبائل يعني مثلا اسم منطقة باسم روضة معينة أو وادي هذا مختلف عليه يعني في بعض القبائل يسمون هذا الوادي كذا والآخرين How important languages for identity became clear in 2015 when the hashtag أهل قطر ما يقولون قطريز don't say this started trending on Twitter. People were tweeting Arabic words that other Arabs use, but Qataris don't. The whole point was to highlight the uniqueness of the Qatari dialect. Identity is an issue that many countries grapple with, but given the demographic composition of Qatar and the dominance of English as a lingua franca, identity becomes even more significant. Changes in language policy over the last two decades reflects the concerns for identity. The year 2001 is a watershed in the history of Qatar as it marks the beginning of educational reform, which included making English the medium of instruction for teaching mathematics, science, and technology. Following a review in 2012, however, Arabic was reinstated as the medium of instruction in schools as well as Qatar University. In the same year, an Amiri decree made Arabic mandatory on all public signs. The push for the Arabic language went further, and in 2016, the cabinet approved the Arabic language protection bill, which became a law in 2019. After the bill was passed, the Arabic newspaper Araya ran a five-page report on what it called wholesale mistakes on street signs of cities and regions. It argued that widespread spelling mistakes distort the landscape of Qatar. The report included many pictures of government street signs containing the so-called mistakes circled in red. The debate comes in, is this is really Arabic or not Arabic? rather than is it local or not local. And that is why I think the argument for two parties, the origination from two different points of view. Mm. And that's why actually we have this. Yeah. Those actually who say that we should retain the al Lam in all words come from more, uh, let's say, traditional view, more the standard uh, Arabic view. Right. Uh, the other one, uh, the starting point is from local dialect. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's very difficult to reconcile the two points yeah. of view. You cannot have both of them. So. The most debated part was the missing definite article, Al, or Alif Lam, from a street science. Some considered the non-standard spelling as disgrace to the Arabic language and its beauty, and demanded that the Arabic Language Protection Act should be implemented to correct the so-called mistakes. ما تحدث عنه والذي تسأل عنه اللي هو مسميات هل نضع الاسم باللغة العربية بالألف لام أو نزيل هذا لا الألف التعريف أنا لا أنا مع كتابته باللغة العربية مثلا الوسي يفترض الوسي مثل ما كتبنا الريان لا لا نستطيع أن نقول الري لا الري لا بد نكتب الريان مثلا الوسي بالألف ودع الآخرين a few days after the publication of the report on the so-called mistakes on street signs, the newspaper published a correction. It quoted the ministry and clarified that the street names were actually not mistakes. The ministry also clarified that one of the principles followed by the naming committee is to preserve the geographical names from extinction for the coming generation. The newspaper further added that according to the ministry, these names were written as per the pronunciation of the dominant dialect in Qatar, with a view to preserving the local pronunciation. This uh, Arabic language act mm -hmm. was introduced long after these signs were actually in place. Yeah. And that's why actually now people find that, that actually there is contradiction. If we are talking about Arabic, of course, we are talking about the standard Arabic. Yeah. Preserving that one, then how, 
how come we actually are not observing those ones in official, let's say, sign that is put on the roads. Right. So that is, I think, where the, the, the dilemma comes from. هي كتبت بطريقة مقصودة أنت تعرف أن هناك اختلاف بسيط بين ثقافة من يصنفون أنفسهم حاضرة ومن يصنف ذاته من خلال الهوية بالقبائل البادية فقالبا يعني من يصنفون أنفسهم من العوائل المحترمة اللي هو من الحق دائما يستسهلون أو من خلال النطق اللي هو لوسيل أو يعني لبديع لبديع من آخره لكن الآخرين ينطقون يعني اللي هو طريقة مختلفة لوسيل أو لبديع وكأنه لأهداف وهذا الذي أنا لا يعني وافق عليه تعزيز ثقافة معينة أنها هي الهوية القطرية أو هي اللغة القطرية أو هي اللهجة القطرية لأن اللهجة هي أيضا جزء من هوية المجتمع. While Qatar is imprinting its local identity by placing Qatari dialect pronunciation on a street signs using non-standard spelling, it is also faced with challenges of communication in a society that is extremely multilingual and multicultural. Two-thirds of its population speak languages as different as Malayalam, Bengali, Nepali, Tagalog, Urdu, Tamil, Hindi, Sinhalese, and Pashto. Bulk of the expatriate population consists of blue-collar workers who are illiterate or semi-literate and do not know Arabic or English. Many government services are now available in multiple languages. Mitrash, a government mobile app, is available in six languages. The primary healthcare call centers gives clients option to talk in Hindi, Urdu, Malayalam, Tagalog, English, and Arabic. I am placing your language or a particular language on a sign. You also recognize the users of that particular language as being legitimate in that space, as being owners of that space, as being welcome in that space. Qatar is looking forward to the Football World Cup in 2022, which will bring many more languages to the cultural landscape of Qatar. Will this lead to more multilingualism in Qatar? This is very difficult. You cannot have everything you want the way you want it. I mean, we want to have a cosmopolitan city yeah. with lots of nationalities where the local minority is only about 10 percent of the whole population yeah. and then we want to invest, uh, to import everything for this 10 percent you cannot do that yeah. you yeah. have to compromise yeah. and part of it is this language yeah. and that's why uh, nowadays most people even at home they speak part of english part of arabic you know um, i think uh, Things need to be looked at really differently in, yeah. in, in entirely, yeah. not, not, not in, uh, in isolation. How Qatar decides to balance the needs for communication with its multilingual population and the desire to maintain the Arab identity will determine the shape multilingualism will take in future.